Hello and welcome to Lesson 9-8 on translations. Tonight you're going to be able to grab translations and you're also going to be able to describe them using arrow notation. So we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, when we can change a figure by its position or its size, we call that a transformation because something has changed with it. One form of type of transformation is a translation. And when we translate something, we're just moving it in a different direction, but you're moving it the same amount of points. So for example, up here is actually a form of a translation because they have this little figure here and it's kind of like a fish. And all that happens is it keeps getting moved over. Right? And when you move a figure over or when you make the change, we actually call that changed part an image. So it's the image of the original. So we're going to get started. Graph the image of triangle BCD after a translation three units to the left and four units down. So how we do this is very, very simple. What we do is just take each point and do exactly what it says. Take it three units to the left, then four units down. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with C here. Three units to the left. One, two, three. All right, so that's where I am. And then I go four units down. One, two, three, four. There we go. Now it looks like the new part is at the origin. And you'll notice I wrote C again, but I just put a little notch there to show this is the image of the original triangle. Then I do it to, to B. Three units to the left. One, two, three, and four down. One, two, three, four. That is B transformed. And so finally I do it to D. Three units to the left, four units down. And that is D transformed. And I can connect those dots. And there we go. I just made the image of triangle BCD. All right, so again, we can do this one. On a coordinate plane, I drew triangle KRTRD for us. But now we have to draw the image. Again, you can do A together, and then you'll have B on your own. So A, it just says move it four units to the left. So again, everything moved four units to the left, starting with K. And I'm going to do mine, I think, in red. So four units to the left, one, two, three, four. There's K. Poor T is going to be off, so we're going to have to do our best here. One, two, three, four. That is about where the new T is going to be. And then R, four units to the left, one, two, three, four. There we go. Connect the dots. And we're done. Go ahead and do B now. You're going to transform it by going five units down. So make the image of it. So pause me now. All right, and you'll notice right away five units down. It should look something like that. So there we go. We have all our images. So now we're going to use error notation. And I have to tell you, this first part seems a little silly because it's so obvious, but you actually use it for the next part. So when we use error notation, it's another way we map it. Say you go to this point, then the second point you go to is this. So it just follows in a nice orderly fashion. So use error notation to describe the translation of point C to the image of C. So the point moves from the coordinate C34 to the image C of 0, 0. And all we do here, when they just talk about transforming it to error notation, is write those two coordinates down. So I didn't change any of that. The only thing that changes is instead of writing 2, you put in an arrow. There you go. That's all you have to do when they talk about using arrow notation. Put an arrow in the middle of it. So, I am not going to insult your intelligence by making you pause and try it. Same idea. I write the first coordinate instead of 2, make my arrow, and it will bring me to the image of B at coordinate 3, 1. Done. So now, final piece where we write a rule using the coordinate plane map. So you can write the rules for the transformations using error no notation. And how we do this is first, you choose a corresponding point. So you have to know what sides go together. Then you have to look at, well, from the first original um, picture or shape, how do I get to the image of that point? Do I go up? Do I go down? And so on. 
So you'll see what I mean in this first one. So we have to write a rule to describe the translation of triangle RST to the image of triangle RST. So for example, I start with, let's just say, well, R. All right, so in order to do this, I just have to take a look. So I know I'm gonna look at coordinate X, Y, and I'm gonna have to transform each coordinate by doing something to it. All right, so R, in order to go from this one to this one, all right, let's see what I have to do with X. Well, going X, I go back one. All right, and you'll notice that for all of them. Here's T here, here's T. It looks like I go back one, go back one. Same with F. This is the original. To get to, um, get to where it would be here, I have to go back one. So on the X axis, it looks like we have to subtract one. And then for the Y, well, again, if I start with R, and I have to get way up there on the Y axis, meaning this line right here, I have to go up one, two, three, four, five. Let's make sure it works on all of them. T here, okay, so I start here to get to the other one. One, two, three, four, five. I add five. And then finally X, one, two, three, four, five. So look at that. It looks like I add five each time. So this is what I write. You start with this, coordinate X, Y. Then to get to coordinate X, Y, you have to first subtract one from X. So you do X minus one, and then for Y, you add five. And that is how we write that. All right, let's try another one, I guess. So use a rule to describe this translation for triangle BCD to the image of triangle BCD. So again, you know you start with the original coordinates of X and Y, use arrow notation, then figure out what you do for each. So I want you to try to do this, and when you're all done, come back and check your answers. So go ahead and pause me now. So on this one, again, if I start on the x-axis, meaning looking here, to go from C to get to this C, it looks like I have to go back one, two, three. So I subtract three. Let's double check on B here. Start here to get to the fifth point on the x-axis. Go one, two, three, back three. D, it looks like I go from here to here. One, two, three, back three. All right, so it looks for X as if I subtract three each time. And something to recognize, again, you want to make sure you start with the original uh, shape or figure. So we want to start with the one with just the B, C, D, not the image where it's C with the dash and then the B with the mark and D with the mark as well. We start with the original. All right, then we go ahead and do Y. Well, I start here with B and I have to get down to this line. This is where B is. So I go down one, two, three, four. Because I'm going down, it looks like I'm subtracting four. Same with C. One, two, three, four. I subtract four. To get to C, which is right here, and I need to get down here. So one, two, three, four. I subtract four. So this is what you should have. Uh, X minus three, and then the coordinate for Y is Y minus four. All right. And until, if you go in the opposite direction, so let's say the near image of it, or the image was over here, then of course you would add on the X axis. All right. So just make sure you're looking to see if you're actually adding or going to the increasing numbers or if you're decreasing by going that way. All right, that is your lesson for tonight. We talked about translations and using arrow, arrow notation. Have a great day.